Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into six different underappreciated sports stadiums right now in America. When it comes to underappreciated stadiums, we have to look at stadiums that maybe don't get a lot of the spotlight, maybe the home team isn't very good, so we don't talk about them. Kind of stadiums that fall through the cracks when it comes to public discussion. Some college football stadiums, an MLB stadium included in this as well. But let's kick it off with Bill Snyder Family Football Stadium. And kind of an interesting thing here, I was going through and listing the best stadium from every state, and when I came across this for you know, Kansas, it is a really, really built up stadium, especially for college football. When you look at the suite level and then also I didn't even know this exterior existed, beautiful exterior with almost a balcony overlooking the front, kind of like a castle like brick layer to it. Really, really impressive. You've got all those nice windows as well. Looks amazing, lit up at night. Kansas State, you wouldn't think Kansas State football, they really have done a good job renovating their stadium and building it up. And at this point, I would say it's one of the most underrated stadiums in college football. A lot of stadiums in college football are underrated due to the simple fact there's so many Division I football teams it comes in on the list as an underappreciated stadium. Number two, it is LA Memorial Coliseum. You know, some people might disagree with this. I just think they completely nailed the renovation. The seating color is amazing. They added in two levels of suites and then they put in more like a, a very small section of seating. And then above that, They've got all the press boxes, they've got more suite levels, and then on top of that, they've got a bar level all in the one side. So, LA Memorial Coliseum, the reason I think the renovation didn't get a lot of love is because, you know, USC doesn't draw amazing crowds and it still has a ridiculously huge lower bowl. So, during a lot of USC games, even with them, you know, getting Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, they still struggle to sell them out. So, the atmosphere environment isn't that good. But it is, I just think the seating, the dark red looks really, really nice. The renovation was done unbelievably. If you go back to when the Rams moved in and what that stadium looked like, you know, because the Rams moved from St. Louis, they went to the unrenovated LA Memorial Coliseum. And you compare that to what it is now after the renovation. Part of the reason this renovation happened was because of the LA Olympics that is coming, the Summer Olympics. It is really impressive. I do wonder if they were tempted to, well, that probably wouldn't make sense, uh, maybe like take some of the lower bowl seating and make a second deck instead of just having one giant wall of seats. I guess then it really wouldn't be a coliseum. They did a good job on the renovation though, and I, I really hope USC football starts selling it out. I'm guessing this is a place that's going to get a lot of love in the coming years when you think about USC. As long as they keep Lincoln Riley with all that talent, they're going to be facing Ohio State, Michigan when they enter the Big Ten at home. Those are going to be marquee, high-profile games that are going to be sellouts, and people are really going to appreciate the renovation of this stadium. Whenever I look at it, I just think they did an amazing job on it. And at this point, because of the attendance issues, I think it is underappreciated. It doesn't have a great environment because of that. Uh, the next underappreciated stadium is TDE CU Stadium, opening in 2017, home of Houston football. And of course, Houston moving to the Big 12, another college football stadium. I love the exterior of this stadium. It's got a really nice display, really futuristic design, and then the interior, you know, very, very cozy looking. I wonder if this is the future of MLS stadiums. Like, right now we're seeing with MLS, you know, the soccer stadium's capacities be about 20K. As it gets more and more popular, do they think of expanding it? And it could this be like an MLS-type hybrid stadium, just looking at the capacity of it. It's not too big, but it's also way bigger than 20,000. Houston did a really good job getting this stadium, opening it in 2017, and really making themselves a more attractive team when it comes to possibly joining a big-time Power 5 conference with 
which they were able to do joining the Big 12, and they're only going to have even bigger and bigger and bigger games. And you could also consider Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, who are also joining the Big 12 as another underappreciated stadium in college football, kind of along the same lines as Houston. They've got a really nice stadium that's like built right into their campus, and they've had expansions, they've had renovations, the whole shebang. It's another one that's really underrated along with Houston. Houston is just kind of a little bit more new going up in 2017, so there is that one as well. The next underappreciated stadium in America, it has to be Lone Depot Park, home of the Miami Marlins. You know, this is just such a strange situation that's going on right now. I don't think I've ever seen a state-of-the-art new stadium, billion-dollar retractable roof, the whole thing, get built, and then the team three years later being like the bottom two teams in terms of overall attendance. It is crazy. The MLB cannot like what's going on. The exterior of this stadium It's a super stadium almost. It's got a great exterior. It looks like a spaceship. It's got a beautiful window. It's got natural light. The only big drawback is the location based on the weather. The retractable roof is normally always closed, which makes it a de facto dome. That is a big negative. I really wish they were more aggressive with opening the retractable roof because it would be like a top five stadium for me if they opened it. They've also got a very small, you know, very modern upper deck, 37,000 in terms of total capacity, kind of a trailblazer with the whole idea of MLB stadiums getting smaller and smaller. They kind of got bullied into moving the home run sculpture out. That's disappointing. That was a nice touch to the stadium. Same with the fish tank, but still a beautiful stadium. Very, very very obvious why it's underappreciated. There's just no environment. They're, they have horrible attendance and people just really don't talk about it. But when it hosted the World Baseball Classic, it is a raucous place. It is very, very nice. You open up the window, you've got the retractable roof open. You know, in those March games for the World Baseball Classic, it is unbelievable. And it is a very underrated stadium in the MLB due to mainly poor attendance. It's going to come on the list. The next underappreciated stadium, it's got to be Harvard Stadium. This is really remarkable. It is a de facto old, at least the exterior, is like an old Roman Coliseum. I'm not kidding. That's what it looks like nowadays. And it's very, very old, but it's just cool. And it's like the whole idea, you know, Harvard football is... If they were really good, could you imagine them trying to renovate this and maybe adding on a second bowl to it? It'd be I, there was a little. I don't know if that's an April Fool's joke. I'm guessing that is, but that's just funny. Just looking at that, the renovation of it. It looks like an old Roman Coliseum. It's pretty crazy, and and a lot of people don't even know it exists because it is Harvard football, and Harvard football has not been relevant in virtually a century. None of those Ivy League schools have been. You know, they were good back in the early 1900s when there weren't a lot of other teams, but uh, at this point, they're pretty irrelevant when it comes to sports. So. That, it's just cool. I, I think something that old is really cool. You know, looking at the stands, they look very uncomfortable. It's like stone. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's just so old. Uh, but Harvard Stadium, I would say a little bit underappreciated, Mo- maybe more so just cool. Uh, but it's going to come on the list. And then the final underappreciated stadium, it is Sun Devil Stadium. And it's based off of the location built into the side of like a rockinous terrain hill in Arizona. Pretty, pretty remarkable. You know, the interior of it, it's like its own little village up on a hill or on a mountain. It's just really, really cool. And I don't think people really talk about it very much due to Arizona State not being the best team, especially the past few years. Arizona State's been really, really bad. They did recently renovate it. They added new suites. They changed it. They added exterior lighting and made it even better. So Arizona State, based off of the location, I feel like not a lot of people pay attention to it. You know, there's a lot of college football stadiums. It is a very nice stadium. It does have a good capacity. The environment, when Arizona State was good back seven or eight years ago, they did have a really, really good, loud environment there. You know, ASU is a party school, so we'll have to see. Maybe Arizona State can become good again. And it would just, I would love to see, this is what I picture. I picture a sold out crowd, you know, a 7 o'clock, I guess it would be 10 o'clock Eastern time zone. See, that's the problem is the, its time zone is tough. 
the Pac-12 in general is tough, but could you imagine a 7 o'clock game against USC and, and, and Arizona State is undefeated and USC is undefeated and they're playing, you know, in that location? It would just be really, really cool. Uh, but at this point, I would say it is underappreciated, especially after its renovation. Those are just six stadiums, guys, that are underappreciated. In my opinion, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.